Calls to close the medium security jail in St. Louis are getting louder as protesters continue to call for change. Now is the time to finally hear those calls and close the workhouse. That direct command is coming from Arda woman Kara Spencer as it deals with closing St. Louis City's medium security institution or otherwise known as the workhouse. Thousands of people taking to the streets in our city and in our region every single day demanding change. Now is the time to have the political courage to close it down. The recent resurgence of closing the North City Jail comes as fiscal year 2021 budget is weeks away from being put in place. Over the years, the budget for the workhouse has been cut in half to $8 million. The mayor and our staff don't appear to be moved by the select Alderman push to close and defund the workhouse when she says they can propose it themselves. In today's video, we want to take you with us as we explore this abandoned prison in the Midwestern United States. The abandoned prison was known as the medium security institution in recent years, but was originally called the St. Louis Workhouse. The St. Louis Workhouse dates all the way back to 1853 when the city was still up and coming, as well as from a time period when St. Louis still owned and operated a multitude of institutions, all which have since been closed. In fact, St. Louis Workhouse was the last city operated facility to have closed. So, I just got into this abandoned prison. The power's still on. So we just drove about five and a half hours to come shoot this prison. I flew in last night from Arizona to Chicago and I went and shot a hospital and then had about two hours of sleep and then got up, drove another six hours this morning to come shoot this abandoned prison. So I am completely exhausted we haven't even started the day yet but this looks like it's going to be a good one the original workhouse location opened back in 1853 near the intersection of south broadway and merrimack street on st louis's south side the site was specifically chosen for the workhouse because of its close proximity to the banks of the mighty mississippi river where there were lots of rocky bluffs and deep gullies loaded with rich clay deposits. The purpose of the workhouse was quite simple. If you were convicted of a crime that required payment of a fine and you could not afford to pay, you would then be incarcerated for a period of time to work off the debt through hard labor. Prisoners would not be held any longer than six months and were paid 50 cents a day, which was actually quite generous for back in that time period. The prisoners would work along the banks of the Mississippi River during the day and then return back to the prison in the evening where they were all housed in different cell blocks. Each cell was 12 by 16 feet and held a shocking six prisoners in each cell. An interesting fact is that the workhouse was considered isolated and so far from the city of St. Louis that the prison guards, the superintendent, and the warden all lived on the prison property with guards housed in the barracks. Although the average stay of the prisoners at the workhouse was six months tops, many say it was the most grueling and unforgettable time of their lives. So it seems like these doors are gonna lock, so I'm not gonna go in all these cells. Like something out of a Hollywood movie, the prisoners were marched down into the yawning mouth of a giant quarry every morning. They only stopped for lunch before working late into the evening. With the exception of some women who were seamstresses, 
both men and women were required to work in the quarry. Ten-hour days were the norm, and while chained in manacles, the workers would break stones with sledgehammers. The stone was then packed into the street beds throughout the city, and some of the rich clay was used to make the famous bricks that helped build St. Louis in the early 1900s. Here's the showers. All these doors are locked. The hard labor was said to be so brutal and backbreaking that it caused many prisoners to go completely mad and drove some to the point of no return, leading to both suicide and even murder. In one documented case, an inmate nearly beat a guard to death with a sledgehammer. And then in 1878, there was a melee at the rock quarry when prisoner George Stevens began hurling rocks at prison guards, causing them to return fire with their service weapons. George Stevens was shot several times and killed by the guards. This led to the prisoners beating several of the other guards within inches of their lives. While the primary purpose of the workhouse was hard labor, unfortunately there had become a drastic number of mentally ill prisoners who had seemed to be dumped at the prison. Ultimately, people were primarily there because they were poor, mentally ill, and simply could not afford to pay the small fines, which was something that most other residents of St. Louis could have easily afforded. One example of a sentence was a simple trespasser who was fined $25 and had to do 72 days of hard labor because he could not afford the fine. This has the visiting times on this sheet. Many people began to see the workhouse as a mockery of justice. And in 1955, there was even a riot at the workhouse. Angered by restrictions on visitors, the inmates attacked guards, threw debris, and lit fires before things got back under control. The old workhouse was demolished when Interstate 55 was built right through it. So there's barely any of the cells unlocked, but this one is, show you inside. Old toothpaste left. It's your little desk and your bunks. That is it. When the new medium security institution was built in 1966, the workhouse name stuck, although they no longer require prisoners to work off their fines. The new workhouse was not without its own course of public problems, eventually leading to its closure. Although there had been years of complaints and reports regarding the grim reality of life behind bars at the workhouse, it received little scrutiny or backlash until 2017. One of the very first things to come about nationally was during a heat wave in the summer of 2017. Dozens of protesters had gathered outside the workhouse prison and began chanting, shut it down, after a video surfaced showing prisoners in sweltering 100 degree temperatures inside the jail and begging for relief. Many protesters gathered outside the prison to protest the extreme heat, black mold, broken plumbing, and rodent infestation inside the jail. A local justice reform group got involved and sued the city of St. Louis over the now infamous harsh conditions at the workhouse prison. After the workhouse protest, lawsuit, and other negative attention was brought into the public spotlight, the city of St. Louis was left with no other choice but to close the overcrowded and underfunded prison. The St. Louis Workhouse, a.k.a. Medium Security Institution, was finally closed in 2021. So this is the third pod, pretty much identical. This one has blue doors though. 
chest and checker tables are still set up. I'm just going to take a couple photos in here because it's pretty much the same. Unfortunately, the workhouse's story wasn't over. Shortly after the prison closed, it was used temporarily to hold prisoners that needed to be housed elsewhere after the notorious St. Louis City Justice Center inmate riots over its own harsh conditions. The last inmate left the workhouse prison in the summer of 2022, and the prison has since been permanently closed. Although upon our explorer, we did discover some form of renovation and rehabilitation already underway at the workhouse. It will be interesting to see what happens with the once infamous St. Louis Workhouse Prison. So here's a little medical office. And you can see that none of this has been cleaned out yet on this side of the prison. There's not much left, but... Just a little chair in there. It's a fog spray. MK9 fogger for law enforcement only. These record books. July 10th, July 2010. Look at all these records. Evidence bags. Here's a bunch of inmate records. Suicide. Here's property bags. So they would put all your property in here. And then when you were going to court to get released, your bag would get moved over here. Uh, get all these photos. This must have been an employee that worked here. All her family photos. Clothing dispensary. Look at all these inmate jumpsuits.
here's a visiting room where you'd be able to sit down, talk to your loved ones. There's only two of them. There's two. So here's some more visitation. phone, pick up and talk to your loved ones. Let's see, face mask required. Don't make a rookie move and get locked in. Always prop the door. So here's another one. This one's basically identical to the one we were just in. So I'm not going to spend too much time in here. As to be honest, this place is pretty sketchy, I'm not going to lie. With all this construction going on, I don't want to spend too much time in this place. Check out the mechanics of the locks. As it opens. So the other photos and videos I've seen, these tables were all set up in the middle of the pod. All of these chairs were still set up. And they're definitely cleaning this place out. I wonder what they're gonna do with it. Hand sanitizer, cause this place just closed. It was still open during COVID. You can see some inmate writing on the walls here. A lot of times when we uh, publish videos of abandoned prisons and jails, inmates that stayed here will wind up seeing the video and comment on it so if you're someone who stayed here before leave us a comment if you have any stories of something that happened here oh wow this is sick even more jail cells
Go outside. No. Medical. So we got a dentist chair here. It's pretty cool. Everything else is removed out of the medical, but I just think this chair is nice. It still has all the tools. The medical cabinet. for x-rays still has the little lamp This whole room is full with beds and mattresses for the bunks. Oh, look at the murals in here. Really good detail. Captain's office. Oh, just this. Use of force, chief of security. All this paperwork from So it looks like they just recently started construction in here. It's 
from what I was told, even just a couple weeks ago, none of these lights were up. So here's the worker's break room. They literally had canes yesterday because it still smells like food. Here's all their walkie-talkies. All right, it's time to get out of here. The iPad. Yeah, let's get out of here. And that takes us to the conclusion of yet another video from Abandoned Central. We hope everyone enjoyed the video, and for more photos from the prison and our other locations, check out the website at AbandonedCentral.com. Also, please subscribe to Abandoned Central on YouTube so that you don't miss any of our latest videos.